Hello everybody, it is your professor Rocco, you boy, coming at you once again with another Age of Sigmar video. We are doing another Beat Rocco Bat Rep here on the channel uh, with a friend of mine named Dave uh, over Tabletop Simulator where uh, he played the Cruel Boys with an Incarnate of Gur, like the title says, and I brought back my Stormcast. It's one of the... Uh, Th this build should have been on the channel once before that I brought, but it's fun. I like playing it. It does good, and I need to trust my big old dragon more. So the battle plan today is first blood. We're kitty cornered for our deployment. This is the... I know it's a little rough to read, so I've got the notes on the side here. It's standard scoring. You hold one objective for one point. Hold two for two points. Hold more than your opponent for a third point. Uh, and then you score your battle tactic for two points plus any bonus points you actually get. All right, now the cool thing, like I wrote, whoever goes second in the battle round when you do the roll-off gets to pick an objective. Whoever controls that objective gets an extra command point. So generally, if you're going second the whole time and you have at least one uh, objective under your control, you're always going to start the battle round with four command points, which is really nice. As we're going to see. My army list. Knights, Excelsior, Scions of the Storm for that deep striking goodness. My grand strat is hold the line to keep my battle line alive. And I am inspired for plus one to wound. Which this game I actually forgot to use. Uh, but my leaders are Karazai, the Scarred. Uh, we know him. We love him. He is a murder dragon. My actual general is the Lord Relictor, you see on your screen there, who has the High Priest command trait to reroll prayer rolls, the Hammer of Might, because it's a fun weapon when you get a wound roll of a 6, and it does 4 damage, as it doubles the damage into the 2 damage weapon. And the prayer is Bless Weapons for Exploding 6s to Hit. Now you may be going, Rocco, why aren't you translocating, or using the rerolling ones to hit thing? Well, dear viewer, uh... Exploding sixes to hit, when, which is you roll a six, you get an extra hit, uh, is statistically as likely as uh, the re-rolling ones thing to happen, where you roll ones or you roll sixes. The sixes, I'll at least get an extra benefit, and I plan on dumping out a bunch of attacks onto things, because it may not look like it, but I actually do have a good volume of attacks, and that's going to go on the dragon. So... You know, if I kill a couple heroes or monsters and he gets extra attacks anyway, then those explode. The dragon gets very scary. Also, I put it on my unit as opposed to the rerolling one prayer where I have to put it on an enemy unit. So it's one thing that's a little bit more in my control. And with the teleporting with, with this, um, you know, it, it's one of those things where I'm already so elite, I'm going to probably be stretched thin. I'd rather super buff my stuff to kill things than try to fight for board control by moving. Because I'll control the board once everything's dead. Um, <laughs> I've got a knight in canter with the once per game auto unbind on the war scroll there. And also the spell lightning blast goes off on a 5, hits the nearest enemy unit that she can see. They take the 3 mortal wounds. And then I've got a lord in paraton with the mirror shield. Why the mirror shield? Well, I only have one unit of battle line annihilators, and the whole combo is the Imperative brings them down seven inches away for its ability. Um, and it feels really bad when that's the one thing that it's there for, and it dies. So the mirror shield is, I my model cannot be shot unless you're within nine inches of it. So it's good for the shooting meta that generally is everywhere, whether it's online, in your store, in your basement, playing garage hammer shootings everywhere so this artifacts really useful and I have two artifacts because I have a command entourage to give me an extra one my battle line are the three uh, annihilators shield uh, so for that two up save to act as a pinning piece and to be a bunch of mortal wounds the uh, two units of sequiturs are maxed out on great maces so you get two on regular dudes for each unit of like every five in the unit, and then the prime has an option to take a great mace as well. Which is where you get our three great maces. Uh, we've got a storm strike chariot because I love it as a mortal wound output and a pinning piece. I've got evocators on draft lines who are also an amazing 
mortal wound output, combat output, they murder everything they touch. They can't necessarily take a hit back, but they're, they're, they're doing all right. And that is wrapped up in four drops there. And the uh, as a note to remember, the evocators do know a spell. They are a wizard as long as there's two in the unit, which is in power. It goes off on a six, gives them, or a sacrosaint in the unit, which would be like the sacrators, plus one to wound. And I come in at 1980. Dave's army. I got it from uh, my my Discord that's in dark mode. That's why the colors are different. Uh, he is going cruel boys, big yellers, to make his archers be battle line. Uh, his snatcher boss, that the mouse is over there in the picture, is the general with the command trait egomaniac to pass off wounds onto friendly cruel boys units within three inches of him. Gave him the Arcane Tome to be a wizard in the Choking Mist spell, uh, which that is like a 24-inch range. It's minus one to one of my attacks on my, my War Scroll to a minimum of one. It, it's good. Um, and then we've got Smellian. So as long as he doesn't charge, he's minus one to be hit. Love that on this buff piece. And we've got a Swamp Collar Shaman with Hot Grot to, you know, hand out... Uh, what the Lumineth Realm Lords would consider spells and drugs. Here, it's just a straight buff. Instead of casting a spell, it gives poison to a unit and makes their mortal wounds happen on fives instead of sixes. We've got a kill -a boss on Corpse Ripper Vulture to be a fast beat stick. A Merc Knob with Belcher Banner because we had the points to ignore spells. Not that he knew what list I was taking. Um, I had three different factions I could have played. We rolled a D3 and I landed on my Stormcast. Um, and then... Filling in for the Incarnate's model here is going to be that Terrorgeist, because it's that terrifying. It should be the right base size. And for Battle Lion, we've got two units of Manskew or Bolt Boys for all the shooting, and then up 20 block of Gut Rippers. So the ones on the side here in the AOS app, it says how many times it's been reinforced. One time, one time, and one time. Uh, and it's a Battle Regiment. It is a two-drop. Because one of the mounted heroes is too many wounds to actually be in the one drop. But the Incarnate of Gur is a behemoth, so it slides into that slot on the battle regiment. So, even for what feels like a horde army compared to my army, this is pretty elite, all things considered. Uh, it has a lot of damage output from mortal wounds everywhere. Because remember... Uh, one of his units will be doing mortal wounds on fives. The Sludge Raker Beast gives out a buff where on sixes they do an additional mortal wound. It It's rough. It's rough, man. When you're trying to go through some of this. So let's go over my deployment. It is cramped because uh, we're in this little kitty corner. Um, I am shading to my right. Partially because I... I'm going to run my chariot to the far left. The objectives, you'll see when we look over it, because it's three in the middle diagonal. Uh, my chariot's the only thing with the speed that can really take an objective, and it's a three-up save, 12 wounds, like we talked about in one of our last videos. Actually, for Stormkeep. Um, though we're not playing Stormkeep today. I, I like my chariot to take an objective cheaply. You know, it's nice. The, um, the dragon's really more his bait. Because he moves like 14 inches unbracketed, so I can move him around wherever I want. But I really want him to get into the 20 brick of the uh, the spearmen there, the gut rippers, because one of my attack profiles is enemy models within three, and because my base is so big, I could realistically get his whole unit in there and get 20 attacks with that. And I can just, and they're two damage a piece. I can make it twos and twos very easy from all my different buffs, exploding hits on sixes. My dragon should be able to solo that unit. But Rocco's a little hesitant. This is probably my third or fourth time using this dragon, and I don't know what I've fought before that it's it's ingrained in my head. Because oh, it was Stormcast, I'm like a two-up save, um, one of them. And I'm like, ugh, ugh, ugh. I don't know. I'm nervous about his output. But backing him up more in the middle is the Evocators. I've got my Priest uh, behind the dragon to give him the Exploding Sixes. 
I've got uh, my Knight and Canner in auto unbind range if I'm not given first turn. Just to play that mind game of, oh, you want to give me first turn so then I can get on the objectives easy. But if you don't, I'm just make sure you're not going to get your spell off. And everything else is pretty much outside of the, the, the long spell range. His other um, his Swamp Collar Shaman has the Black Pit, which is a nice mortal wound uh, spell against elite armor saves. Because you roll however dice to however many models are in the target unit, and then for each six, and then for each roll above their armor save, or the six, uh, you take a mortal wound. So like if I had like 20 people on a four up save, fives and sixes are mortals. Um, it's it's good for larger units um, with mostly elite people. I don't necessarily have that. My biggest unit is a block of five, but it it can it can trim me down a little bit if I'm not careful. Um, and then on top of that, I've got my annihilators and unitive sequiturs off the table to do my different tricks. Like I'm gonna drop the sequiturs in somewhere. Maybe to screen, maybe to pin them in place, maybe to steal an objective cheaply. Um, and the Annihilators are, are going to be there for damage, you know? And again, here's my strats. Karazai needs to murder everything. Just, just straight up. 600 points, he needs to earn those points back. I want to hold my flanks with cheap units that I can hide in the terrain that you'll see later when we go over the board. There are two Wildwoods off screen right now. Excuse me, but they're still in range for the um, objectives. And what's cool is Wild Woods can block line of sight for shooting. So it is, and Dave set up the board. It was a whole thing. We're doing this as like a tournament prep thing. And it allowed me to not get immediately murdered by all his shooting, which was nice, which is why more people need to use the different terrain rules to make games fair and balanced. Weird, I know. Uh, and again, I want to limit what he can shoot. Because he's going to, he could split fire and murder me. So I'd rather, you know, I'm going to push everything up, I guess. Or pick my fights, try to play out of his ranges. And just limit the first couple turns of his shooting. Because if he shoots every turn, I'm just not going to have an army. Um, And then once it's too late, I'm going to bum rush him with everything. And if I can remove his faster moving elements, because those archers want to stand still, because he's big yeller, so he'll have an extra three inches of range on his shots. And it's covering most of the board. I I can't compete with that if he's going to stay back. So I want him to stay back, and anything he sends forward to claim objectives needs to die. Also, I need to be smart about scoring bonus points with my monster. I want to score a couple before he dies. And it also opens up the Battle Tactics mon uh, Monsters Takeover. Where, you know, one of my monsters contests an objective that no one's on with their opposing monster. And, you know, it's a good time. And it gives me more options to score. Dave's deployment in his kitty corner. The Incarnate is on the second level of a ruin. Um... And he mirrored my deployment. I went strong on my right. He went strong on his left. Gut rippers are holding the middle. Like, my sequiturs are holding my middle. Um, the one unit of the crossbows are in a, the second floor of some ruins where they're going to have, like, a sniper's perch. And to climb the walls, I would need to move an extra four inches, so that's scary. And the killer boss is... On the vulture is centralized along with his buffing hero um, on the snatcher boss and he's got archers on his left again it's a very even deployment but it's shaded to his left based on the how I've deployed um, and I he out dropped me his first drop I believe was the vulture and then I did my first drop of the battle regiment because I wanted to hide my heroes for as long as possible to counter deploy his magic. Um, so he saw where my dragon went and he deployed that accordingly. Then I put my heroes where it was going to be useful. And that's the give and take. You know, he sees where most of my, my one drop is in order for me to better deploy my heroes and outmaneuver him. But it's still a little rough. 
So Dave's three game strategies here. Uh, he wants to use his Incarnate of Gur to pin my army in place in my deployment zone. Uh, and maybe kill the Murder Dragon to level up the Incarnate. Because if it starts at level 2. Because how, how it works, if you've seen our videos and stuff on... on uh, Actually, I don't think I've done a video on the Incarnate yet. Well, next week, we'll do a deep dive. But what it does is it starts at its second level. It's got three levels it could be. It's... It counts as an ally, it's tied to one of your non-named, non-unique heroes, and what happens is, as it kills enemy monsters, it levels up. It has, functionally, a pool of 18 wounds. At the end of the battle round, you roll three dice, and if you roll over the amount of wounds that the Incarnate took for the turn, it stays at its current level. It gives your heroes... Plus one to cast and unbind. It can give out an aura of rerolling charges. If it goes wild by the hero it's bound to, uh, it can get better buffs on itself. And also, if your own army is closer to it than your opponent's army, it can go and turn on you and charge you. It has to and try to kill you. But you still control it in the movement phase. So, and it can run and charge, so you just like auto six at 18 inches the other direction, and it'll never be a problem of it actually turning feral. And it just, it, it has a lot of good attacks for each level it is. It gets like an extra, if it's level two, it gets two extra attacks on its claws and its bite. The bite, I think, is like neg three ren four damage. The claws are like seven or eight attacks. You can probably get it up to nine with buffs. Uh, to like I think it's like neg two or neg three damage. Uh, neg two or neg three rend. Uh, two damage, maybe three damage. I don't remember. It just, it just feels like a lot of damage. And because it doesn't go away until the end of the of the player turn, like you check to see if it gets weakened or goes away. What happens is you can send this into a unit of let's say long strikes. Right, they unleash hell. They do twenty four wounds. That's great. The thing still fights. It doesn't bracket. It still fights. It still murders your unit of long strikes, and then at the end of the turn, because you can't with three dice roll above a twenty four, it just goes down a level. Uh, so it still gets to fight, and that that happens to me with my dragon, at one point, and we'll we'll get to there. So we're we're pro incarnate in this household and in this school. It does a lot for what it does. It flies. It's it's a fun piece. I wish it wasn't tied to a, a terrain box. Because not everybody needs terrain. But a lot of people are going to want this Incarnate of Gur. So they're going to convert. Which I love converting. I, most of my stuff's converted. But, you know, if people wanted to just buy it. Because they think it's a cool model. And not buy the terrain. It's going to be a little rough. But also, Dave's other strats are be the shooting meta. He brought... Wait, my, my only shooting is the Dragon's Breath weapon and the uh, Stormcaller baton on the um, Lord Imperident. This, this, this is a melee army that I brought. It's a good melee army. It's terrible. I'm not the shooting meta. He is, and he can tear me a new one with all his mortal wounds. And, uh, again, he wants to control the middle of the board, split me in half, so I have to be close enough to his archers to be shot. Which is a great idea for what he's doing. So here we go. Now I'm gonna go with my mouse here. These are the wild woods. Makes me go first. I do ferocious advance. I run three units here. Um, I gave the plus one to wound spell onto my sequiturs. I moved everyone up here, trying to see if I could split his army up. Um, my chariot <laughs> made the run, auto six that bad boy, got onto the objective, because there is nowhere I'm not going to be in range of being shot by him, so I wanted to try to get over here as much as possible, and make the rest of his army go this way, because funny enough, in Age of Sigmar, this thing can charge up a wall and hit them, so I'm trying to set that up. And when my chariot charges, I roll however many dice the charge was, and... Uh, like if I rolled an eight, I roll eight dice, and on a for each four up I get, I do a mortal wound, and that happens before unleash hell. So maybe I can knock off a few and not die. 
But I'm playing very conservatively here. I'm hoping to maintain turn priority because a double turn closes this gap. But I'm, I'm feeling okay. I control two objectives on the edges here. I didn't take the middle one because then that's an easy. He moves up and charges me and then gets like free distance on the charge to cover more ground and to just slice me in half. And, you know, I, I scored my five points. It was quick. It was easy. And we moved on from there, you know. So bottom of one, the chariot. And I changed perspective here. So now we're on Dave's side. Um, the chariot gets shot for uh, four wounds. Uh, he got one six for two mortal wounds. And then I failed an armor save. Um, I redeployed off of this objective to make the incarnate's charge go from a six to a ten. And I couldn't leave a sequitur on the objective to stop his um, spearman from moving on to it and taking it. And the incarnate, you know, it was the right decision because if I left the sequitur in range, it would have been an 8-inch charge and he rolled like a 4 into an 8. So he failed. My plan worked. Um, and I, if I get the turn, it's an easy conquer for me. Um, and I've set up multiple ways the game could play out here, so not everything's good or bad. No, and then I've got to take uh, shooting. So the other thing is the uh, archers down here behind the incarnate were not able to shoot anything. Nothing was in range, so he moved them up to set up shooting later. And he's making a hard push, because he's seen my videos where I like playing more to the middle so I can then go to either flank and he's doing pretty much what I, I suggest to do with cruel boys um and he's playing to his strengths which is awesome and it hurts because I rolled a five and broke ties and he rolled as he rolled a six it was rough so Dave will double turn me and this is what happens. So he ignored the sequiturs in the tree because he wanted to uh, go after my dragon. And I, this is where a little inexperience with this build comes to bite me. Um, I did have exploding sixes to hit on the dragon. And I'm, I'm not trusting it. And I lost... Um, Uh, I lost some cats, as we can see. And what I did with my first attack is I was worried that the dragon, my dragon wasn't going to do 18 wounds to him to ensure that it leveled down. So I put my kitty cats, my thunder cats, my unit of three, into his incarnate. And then I did like 16 wounds. It was stupid. It was stupid. Um, and... Yeah, because he put the Incarnate into my dragon, did eight wounds, and I'm like, oh, he's a little bracketed now. He wasn't. I, I misread the, <laughs> the War Scroll, and I'm like, yeah, Thundercats, go do it. And they did like 20-something wounds, where if I put it into the, uh, the, the Spear Boys, because they have a worse armor save, I probably would have cleared two-thirds of the unit at least. Um... And I goofed. My chariot took some more shots. Uh, his monster just stayed in the middle. His support monsters uh, out. Because what he did with his charge was really cool. He was able to get his spearmen to be in range for the e egomaniac buff on his general. And he's just been preventing me from getting there with a wall of orc meat. And these archers... In the middle here, again, they shot off a cat. A second cat died from spears. And I just... My target priority was bad. Not gonna lie. Because then, uh, Karzai did, like, 20-something wounds. I didn't even roll the full thing. And I felt like a moron. But, you know, you live and you learn. And, uh, again, the score will be hold one, hold two, hold more. Because he'll hold the middle objective and his left, 
objective, and he did his battle tactic. So it'll be 10 to 5, and I'm like, I need to go and do some stuff. So, I again, I get rid of the Incarnate. The, the danger is, does he kill my dragon afterwards? And I went for bring it down on his uh, killer vulture in the middle. Because the incarnate doesn't have the monster keyword, it doesn't count for bring it down. Also, it goes like after. It, it's a weird thing when it goes away. But I'm like, cool, I can go for the vulture. I can go for a long bomb charge with the chariot. I can bring down my... Uh, my Annihilators, you know, they get a re-rollable 7-inch uh, charge. And even... Cause let, let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you a story, dear viewer. So, he redeployed. Made it an 11-inch charge for my Chariot. Nailed it on the first attempt. Nailed him with Mortal Wounds. My Annihilators, from the Mortal Wounds from when they came down on the ground... And when they, they, um, and through some shooting, actually, from my Imperident, I killed the Merc Knob on my hero landing for the Annihilators, and the charge in came, and I got probably, like, seven or eight mortal wounds on the Vulture, and then I, uh, my Annihilators went, you know, threw all my buffs at him, you know, gave him plus one to hit, plus one to wound, and left him on one wound remaining. And then he attacked my chariot. Chariot died. I, You know, like the minus one to hit on the chariot didn't matter for when it charged in. It didn't. Um, and because I think he just killed it with mortal wounds on the sixes to hit. And I go to roll the explosions. I got like maybe five or six fives, but no sixes for when Stormcast die, they explode. And there it was, so close for me to scoring a monster point, bring it down. I could have taken the lead. Instead, I'm down two points. And should I have conquered? Um, probably. It was one of those things where, depending on how he redeployed, if I didn't kill the monster, I, um, I might not have had the objective. And, you know, he did his redeploy because it was kill his hero. So, I would not have succeeded in conquering anyway. But, man, it was close. Top of three, Dave piles it on because, hey, I didn't get a turn, uh, turn roll. I didn't get a priority roll. I didn't get any of this. You know, that sort of Damocles of if I ever get a double turn, the game's just over. Nope. So, what happens is it lets me burn an objective. I burn the only one he controls, so it's forcing him to move stuff or fight me, and he chose move. And the uh, cruel boy spearmen there were stuck in combat with the last kitty cat that died. Um, his archers are consolidating towards the middle. Uh, Karzai is not looking good, but he killed a behemoth, so he gets plus one to his attacks. Um, and he is too far away to be able to move to get my objective. Because it's such a long drop down movement-wise, because he's got to move like a couple inches to get over enough to the wall and then four inches down that even with a run roll, it, it it's a waste of his shooting. And he used all his shooting to murderize my Annihilators, who, if you noticed, did not roll any sixes to explode again uh, to kill his Vulture. That's a little rough, but he's claimed the middle. He's screening most of my stuff out. And we have a game on our hands here. And, um... This is where I go for a revenge play. I call Broken Ranks on his Gut Rippers. I heal my dragon up so he's not as bracketed as he could have been. I realize now, because I've got a boatload of command points, I should have just said I'm going to spend a CP on him to uh, fight at top bracket. But instead, I gave him plus one to hit. 
Um, and I, again, I multi-charged the gut rippers, so I'd have redundancy. Cars, I murdered them on his own because I just don't trust him for whatever reason. I don't know why. He's painted on my shelf and is looking at me very sad right now that I don't trust him. Uh, and I'm able to take the middle objective with, uh, because my hero's dog is on it and he counts as the same model as my hero. Counts as two for the purpose of claiming objectives and I ran the five sequiturs on there. So it's seven to five on the middle objective. I hold one, hold two, score more. Kazurai looked at the one wound on the uh, kill a vulture and just shot it with a breath weapon attack and I only did one mortal wound but that's all I needed it went down I scored a bonus point for killing a monster and because I did my battle tactic with a monster my score went right on up and life is feeling good you know and it it's one of those things where I'm able to leverage bonus points and again if I get the turn all I need to do is call down Slay the Warlord, you know, and we are right in it with this game. And then it's just his archers that are too out of position to capture objectives, you know, or I even just send the sequiturs and Kazrai up to kill those archers. Like, I send in the unit to take the Unleash Hell, Kaz gets in there and rips him up. He heals a little bit from killing stuff. You know, life is good right now. Um, and he shot and killed the monster, so when he kills a monster, he gets the extra attack, monster or hero, or behemoth or hero, whatever it was. Um, so, you know, we're feeling good. And I didn't get the turn again. Pretty sure I rolled a one. And... The thing about Cruel Boys, which I've said a couple times now in a previous video and other other talks with you, dear students, about this, is they, they feel like Lumineth Realm Lords without the oppressive magic, where it's a lot of mortal wounds, they're generally elite, um, and they've got good support stuff. But yeah, uh, he called for Bring It Down... He did like twenty mortal wounds on the from the one unit of Bolt Boys with their shooting because he moved them so then they had extra attacks. And I had debuffed them maybe with a prayer at one point, because I can do that with my uh my uh relictor. I might not even have done it yet because it was just like so crazy. But he's like, Yeah, I just need four I need fives and sixes. Because for every five he does two mortal wounds. For every six, he does three because they're in range of the Snatcher boss buff. And I, he spiked it. He overkilled my dragon. He scored a bonus point for killing a monster. He brought it down. Um, the crazy thing is he didn't actually score any of the primary objectives. He doesn't hold one because uh, we're tied. I have... Um, Three sequiturs and my hero to count as five bodies to his monster. And I, you know, he doesn't score more. And uh, we realized I was short a point on our score, which is why now we're tied at 16. Because I didn't give myself the point for killing the monster, even though I've said it. I, we didn't click it. So, he ties me. And this is where my control and really the burning of the objective turn three helped me out a lot. Because there were points in this game where I'm like, oh, if I, I could have chosen not to burn any objective and then just strung you out, um, and I could have like fought over that objective and it would have been a whole thing, but it's just because I kept him moving just a little bit out of reach for these other points, um, it kept me alive in my primary score. The bottom of four, I'm like, listen, if I move any of my stuff in the middle, I am going to be triggering a redeploy, and if he rolls hot, the um, the Sludge Raker moves closer to my far objective to be able to capture it easier, or the Bolt Boys get a good enough roll to actually take the objective from me. And I moved my uh, my hero, my uh, Lord Relictor, into the middle 
you can see now I have done the minus one to hit on those ball boys to try to hope for something. And I moved my other unit of sequiturs into the tree so they couldn't be shot. And the reason for that is that's my grand strategy. And now he's got to make a choice. Does he try to fight them in melee, which he can't get to, or try to go for the objectives? So I'm guaranteeing myself three extra points at the end of the game, and he's probably going to get a dominating presence, his um, his grand strategy of having more units on the table in his starting army than of me. So I want to ensure mine to at least nullify that. you know. And I score one, score two, score more. Um, I don't even remember what my... My grand strat was I think it was hold two objectives not wholly within my territory so everything I did was automatic it ensured me my five points which is where we're at right now turn five I I couldn't get a roll off to save my life literally and he murdered my hero he murdered my unit and the thing was, either he got to shoot, or he could try to take the objective. The problem was, even with running those archers, he, because this is with them moved up, he would have only gotten four archers on, and the two heroes would have held that point. So he elected to try to murder everything instead. And he just did not get enough shots to get enough damage in to fully wipe everything I had on the center. So I'm going to hold an objective. So he holds one. He doesn't hold more. And his battle tactic was the Cruel Boy specific one where he... Um, pardon me, I'm getting a little allergies here. Where he... Um, tries to do 10 wounds to me either through normal damage or mortal wounds and doesn't take anything in return or at least 10 i don't remember the specific either way it's in a turn and he's a shooting army he did it on the first volley um but because he couldn't afford to split fire this is where we're at right now um and then for me i just stood still you know I couldn't score any battle tactics, so I scored my one point, scored my grand strat, and then this is going to just bring us on to the final score of 25 to 22 in favor of Rocco. Um, yeah, it, it was, it was something, it was way closer than it should have been, and it was so far away than it could have been that I just, it was fun. Dave was right on me. And as you can see for the battle round five battle tactic for him, it's blank because it's just not on the scoreboard. That's all right. Um, and yeah, that round three is really what, what did it for me. But more importantly, it was three rounds of me scoring, well, two rounds of me scoring and more of the primary points of hold one, hold two, hold more then my opponent is what actually got to widen the gap. And again, calling for the broken ranks, doing it with a monster, also sniping out another monster for a bonus point, was just what brought me back and made up for, you know, two failed battle tactics. Because, like, look, my last turn, I couldn't do any of the Stormcast-specific ones, and I couldn't actually... What I wanted to do was hopefully have enough models and units to get into his territory at some point in time. I, I just couldn't. It just, it just wasn't possible. And, you know, it was just... Denying him scoring regular points and maximizing my bonus points to just keep the narrowest of margins. And... We finally get into a game, dear viewer, where doing the grand strategy for three extra points mattered. Because um, it nullified his, where he was going to kill me. And if I don't, we have a tie. And if we have a tie, it goes to tiebreakers. And tiebreakers for this are whoever did the most battle tactics, in which Dave would have won a minor victory. But instead, I focused on my bonus points. And here's some closing thoughts, too. But I focused on my bonus points. 
and I was able to pull it out. And and more closing thoughts here from Dave is the the Kronspire, aka the Incarnate of Gur, did his job very well by pinning functionally a thousand points of my army between my two my dragon, my foot hero, and my cats in my deployment zone, pretty much. Um, the double turn hurt me for positioning. And again, my goof of not killing the spearmen was that was rough. That was a tactical blunder on my part. Um, I should have trusted my dragon more. Uh, the cruel boys units traded out very, very well. Um, really, my cats are what killed the um, the incarnate of Gur, not my dragon. But I'm gonna credit the dragon with the points there. Um, I barely made out 600 points back for my dragon between the between killing that and the spear orcs. Um, but like my chariot almost earned, and the annihilators almost earned the points back, but then they, they didn't really between the two of them. The only thing they actually killed was the, uh, the banner from the annihilators and just severely weakened the hero, um, that, uh, my dragon had to shoot dead. I... Uh, he traded out great points wise. I was able to though use my movement and be able to do the um the, the scoring better. The uh the run and charge once per game command ability on the chariot was amazing. It's what got me into the guy. If I had to redo it again, I would have left him outside of nine. So he wouldn't have gotten a redeploy and just hoped for the long charge anyway. That was a little more realistic than an 11. Um, and Dave wishes he swapped out that Merc knob for 10 Hobgrots. And we talked about this after the game for probably an hour. Because he knows I like Cruel Boys. And I, I, I love the guy. So I want to help him succeed in anything. He's one of my students. His, um, his Mega Gargans throughout the Midwest are a terror, and I got to help him with some of his stuff. And he has such great ideas, and I just want to be like, yeah, dude, seriously, do it. Because if he had 10 Hobgrots, which died as easy as that Merc knob would have, but he could have super sneaky them, which is what we talked about in our other video, which I will put after this one for my thoughts on Cruel Boys. Um... The command trait super sneaky is to be like a pregame teleport of one of your units. I like doing it with Hopgrats to steal objectives cheaply and to be a, a forward screen to pin people in their deployment zone where they have to fight them. And it also messes up Iron Jaws for all their hero phase movement and stuff. Um, the thing with Hopgrats is he could have, because I never got a clean shot at his general. It felt like a wasted command trait. If I was a shooting army, yeah, sure, that's great. But I wasn't, and these Hobgrats, even if it was a shooting army, I would have had a way shooting into Hobgrats because they would have just, he could have taken first turn, been on all three objectives, and that was it. You know? And then that would have been the game from the of me trying to claw back everything. Uh, because there wasn't any way for the, uh, the archers in the ruins on that second floor to ever affect the objective game. I just controlled the whole side of the board there for free. And those Hopgrats would have made the difference. Um, it would have outnumbered my chariot for sure. And then I'm wasting time killing Hobgrats instead of other things with the chariot. And... It was just such a close game and such a fun game. I would play it again. I would... What would I do differently? Um, target priority with the cats. That That's pretty much it. I felt that uh, how I played my big dragon was... Sure, was on a flank, but it had the speed to, like, juke out. It's, like, it looks like I'm going hard right, but I'm going in the middle. Um, and I was planning on giving him the run and charge ability. <laughs> Uh, that never got to happen because I did not get the turn. And yeah, you know what? It still all worked out pretty well. Um, 
Yeah, and what else we got? Oh, yes. <clears throat> Hello, dear viewer. Do you want to see more and be a great student here from your professor, Rocco, your boy? Uh, so what we're doing here is if you get 20 likes on this video, you'll get another bat rep. We are at the time we're like two subs away from 800. Um, and if by the time this video goes live, we're over 800, well, we're that much closer to nine. So please uh, subscribe, share the video uh, to help more people learn how to play Age of Sigmar and to go over more of these tactical talks. Like even with this bat rep, I'm able, because it's an after action report kind of thing, I can go more into my thought process, my opponent's thought process, what's going on, break it down for you. And we do that with those breakdowns and all our other videos, even if they're not battle reports anyway. And it helps you learn to make the right choices yourself. So it's not like you're just seeing a list on the internet. You know it's really strong. You don't get how it works. I will teach you how it works. So you can make those decisions yourself with your collection. And as I like to say at the end of all of our videos, uh, class dismissed. Bye.